Breaking news this morning, Arizona Senator Kristen Sinema is leaving the Democratic Party and becoming an independent. So what could this mean for the Senate moving forward? Yeah. Well, the future of the GOP coming into question following an underwhelming midterm season. House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy right now setting the southern border as the primary objective. Issues like crime, inflation, and the economy remain very high on the priority list, but we are going to be talking about the border. Yeah, joining us now for more is former Pennsylvania Senator, Senior Advisor for the Convention of States and Newsmax contributor, Rick Santorum. Welcome back to Wake Up America. Uh, Senator, before we talk about the future of Republicans, I want to get your take on the future of Kristen Sinema, which this morning she is now saying that she's an independent what do you make of the news well it's 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 fascinating news she's up for re-election in two years so obviously this has a lot to do with positioning herself uh, in uh, in arizona uh, for re-election if she chooses to run for re-election so there's all these questions that are floating that she hasn't really responded to she says she's not changing anything she's going to continue to do and vote the way she's voted uh, so it's a, it's just an interesting look right now. Looks like political move. Uh, she had a Democratic opponent uh, lining up to run against her from the left, uh, uh, Ruben Gallego, and uh, I, she may just have looked at it and said, you know, maybe I can't win a primary in Arizona because I'm I'm too much of a moderate to win in a very partisan Democratic yeah. Party these days. So there's all sorts of things that could be going on. As far as its impact on the Senate, again, don't know. Uh, she says she's not going to uh, caucus with Republicans, which means the Democrats will have a 50 to 41 majority, so they'll still have a majority. If she decides eventually to caucus with Republicans, then we're back to a 50-50 Senate. But right now, there's just more, more questions than there are answers when it comes right. to Kristen mm. Sinema, which is sort of her M.O., well, yeah, and that's the thing is, remember, she was chased into the bathroom by protesters during a number of bill votes that she that's had. Right. That, I mean, so she would, like, the Democratic Party was not kind to her when it came to harassing her to make sure she got a vote. But right now, as you said, Senator, it's a 50-50 split. But Bernie Sanders, also an independent, he caucuses with the Democrats. Kristen Sinema, depending on where she caucuses. But there are 50 senators in the, in the U.S. Senate right now that are Republican. So there will be 49. But... Um, you know, how big of an impact is this to the narrative, though, that the Democratic Party has just run so far to the left? It, it, it is a, a narrative. Look, look, Kristen Sinema, if you look at her voting record, she she is barely a moderate. I mean, she I, I give her a lot of credit. She stood up on some very important uh, institutional votes, for example, like the filibuster vote. Uh, and she has uh, a uh, reputation of, of working, of willing to be uh, bipartisan and, and reaching out and willing to compromise. Uh, but she compromises from the position. She's she's of the left. I mean, she's definitely on on almost every issue. She fits squarely within the Democratic Party. But she's not rigid about it. She's not extreme about it. She's she sees the value of of both sides. And and there is no place for someone like that in, in the in the modern Democratic Party. It has left her. And remember, before she was in Congress, uh, she there were all sorts of videos out there. I mean, she was a very hard left activist. Uh, and I think she is moderated yeah. in part because of how extreme the Democratic Party has become and, and how uncomfortable she feels in it. Yeah, well, following the uh, the midterms that we had, which, look, I mean, we, Nancy Pelosi was fired, so it wasn't incredibly underwhelming, but it was, was less than what many Republicans expected. Um, th this just concluded with uh, Herschel Walker's loss in Georgia, which, you know, a lot of people probably saw coming. But... It calls for some leadership changes at the top of the party. I know there were some seats that were lost in one that were way out of the blue of, of ever considering flipping on both sides this thing. Do you think that it's time for the Republicans to stick, sit in and say, like, hey, Mitch McConnell, hey, Kevin McCarthy, you, you may not be the guys leading the party anymore? Well, I look at it right now as the four leaders of the Republican Party are, number one, uh, Donald Trump, number two, Mitch McConnell, three, Kevin McCarthy, and four, Ronna Romney, who's the head of the Republican National Committee. Uh, there has to be some accountability somewhere in this process for the four leaders of this party uh, to, uh, to take the hit and, and actually uh, be removed or not, or, or not renominated in the case of Trump. I mean, and, and if candidly, the, the person who has the biggest, had the biggest impact was probably President Trump. Uh, he is the leader of the party. And so uh, I think a lot of Republicans right now are looking around saying, where is the axe going to fall? Who is not going to be you know, in the leadership uh, in, in, uh, in 2024 when they're going forward? And maybe in the case of Ronna Romney, uh, this time around. So there's opposition she has in the Republican Party, uh, and uh, at least one, probably two or three opponents uh, running against her.
yeah, Harmy Dillon and, and potentially Lee Zeldin, maybe others. So uh, there's there is a uh, there is a, a, a percolating tension in the Republican Party to remove some of these leaders. Two of them are already in place uh, and probably will not be removed, and that's McCarthy and McConnell. But the other two are very much up and up for grabs. Yeah, sir. Do you think that the Republicans can really turn this around? Because you know we've talked about this, the the lack of fundraising, because Democrats continue. You know, we saw this Huge happen. Uh, they they are able to fundraise like no like nobody's business really. Um, but also this early voting. Do you think that the Republicans have realized we have to change things in a big way if we want to win in twenty? 2024. Allison, those are two great questions, and they're and they're both really important. Uh, one is easier to fix than the other. The the one that's easiest to fix is just start playing by the rules that are in the states yes. that you're running in. I yes, mean, that's thank you. Easy to do, but I mean the, the the reality is, unfortunately, I hate to go back to it. It, it, it Republicans used to actually win early voting. Uh, and it wasn't until 2016, after 2016, and then 2020, uh, where Trump basically said, don't vote early. And, and I think that has been the biggest problem, is getting the Trump base to change from uh, what yeah. uh, Trump told them, which is that it's not safe to vote early. So that is an easier thing to change, particularly since Trump is becoming you know, less a consensus within the Republican Party. Yeah. And, and, but the bigger problem is money. Here's the reality, Allison and, and Carl. The, the Democratic Party is now the party of money. That's yeah. where most yep. of the money in America is. It's these big tech entrepreneurs, and it's all of the new tech. You know, the Republican Party used to be the party of money because the business community was overwhelmingly Republican, and that's where the money is generated in America. Well, now the business community is overwhelmingly left, and they support the Democratic Party. It's the tech community. Yeah. And so yeah. that is a huge problem. Secondly, final point is... Republicans are more, I, I, I know this sound, might sound strange, are more uh, church-going people, and, and they see that as their faith. Democrats, and particularly progressives, they see the government as their faith. And so, you know, Republicans give money true. on Sundays to their church. Democrats give money every day to their church, which is the Democratic Party. So yeah. true. That so. is actually true. Yeah, I mean, they, they, the Democrats are literally voting for their own survival. Right. Yeah. Well, Senator, Senator Santorum, always great to have you. Thank you so much and have a good weekend.